Rob Dolce here. I got Jeff Goodman with me. Hell no. John Fink. Are we still live? Kill the 68 till I die. Get it I'm sorry, man. I blacked out. Randolph Children. DJ Khaled. You know the big DJ Khaled guy? Hands grow up and in. Goodman needs to be fired all the time. Josh Pastor. You're going to beat people straight up. You know the deal. They have no swag. They have no nothing. Terrell McNeil. From the bluest of the blue bloods to the smallest of the mid majors. This is Feel the 68 After Dark. Hello and welcome to the Saturday evening edition of the Field of 68 After Dark. It was the last Saturday of the regular season in college basketball, and it absolutely did not disappoint. We saw Reed Shepard and Dalton Connect go shot for shot as Kentucky went into Tennessee and knocked off the Vols. We saw Houston beat up on Kansas. We saw UConn beat up on Providence. We saw another thriller, back-to-back late-night thrillers in the Mountain West after dark, which is, Doug, I know you're going to hate it when I say this, the most fun and entertaining league in all of college basketball. We had our very first ticket to the NCAA tournament punched tonight. We might be hearing from uh, from Moorhead State here in just a little bit. Make sure you hang around around 11.35. That's the goal. That's the hope. We'll see if it happens. That's why Jeff Goodman has that hat on tonight, and I introduced him already. We have Doug Gottlieb. We have Jeff Goodman. My name is Rob Dosser. It's the Field of 68 After Dark. We're on Sirius XM, live over on YouTube. Jump in the chat. Ask us some questions. Gentlemen, I am fired up. Here's where we're going to start tonight. Duke, Carolina, the greatest rivalry in college basketball. North Carolina goes into Cameron Indoor Stadium and locks up uh, the ACC regular season title outright with a dominant win. I don't think Duke ever led. I think they cut it to one at one point in the second half. Doug, you were there. Where do you want to start? Do you want to start with Cormac Ryan? Do you want to start with North Carolina? Do you want to start with Duke? Or do you want to start with the flip trip? It's your world, (laughs) bud. The flip trip. Flip trip is going to be the most discussed, right? Because he's a dookie, because somehow he survived the murderous acts of the Wake Forest student section uh, (laughs) to to live to play another day. Um, But I don't know. There's a lot to it. I mean, maybe maybe you you tee it up. Uh, By the way, why would I have a problem with you saying the Mountain West is like the most entertaining league? I've been saying that. Doug loves the league. Right. Doug loves it more than we do. The We're all together guy. in the Mountain West. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Um, so, well, let me let me I ask you this: how how I impressive was this? How it, 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 it was it was really impressive. Um, I thought uh, the the one flaw to Hubert Davis and what he did today was the auto bench of Elliot Cadu in the first half nearly cost him. It, it was, was a fifteen fouls. point game. He got a second foul, takes him out. I think it was eight or nine at the half, but it was a completely different. It was like they turned the ball over. They weren't getting good shots. They just kind of survived the end of the first half. Um, I think he's figuring it out. Like he's still like, I know he hit that kind of lucky three pointer uh, where they only gave him two for that. That was a bizarre call. His foot was pretty clearly behind the line. Then somebody stepped on his foot. So it wasn't moving, but regardless of which uh, I was, in, I, here, here's what I like about Carolina. I'm still not in the, like Jeff and I had this discussion. We were all doing this once to get once before. Mm-hmm. And I wouldn't put him in the Yukon Houston class. Maybe I should. Um, and, but, but what I like about them is they all have their roles. They've all accepted their roles. And some of it is you're just old enough to where you've given up trying to prove, prove people wrong. Right. They got something out of their bench, but like Cormac Ryan, he knows what his role is. Now, he drove the ball a little bit tonight. He had a pull-up midi, which I've never seen him take before. He got to the free throw line eight times, made all eight. But for the most part, those guys really know their role, and they accept their role. That's the difference between Purdue and so many other teams. That's the difference. That's the difference in them and Duke. Like Duke, you have usually three or four guys, and they're just trying to score. And then Flip is really who they play through. But nobody really creates shots for others. Nobody's just a catch and shoot guy if not move it. Um, I like North Carolina, the makeup of their roster in terms of here's what you do. Like Seth Trimble has he turned down several wide open threes, but made some middies today. Like the guys know what they do and do what they do. And I thought that was as big a difference as Cormac Ryan's shooting was, is that they had guys that played simply to their strengths. And for the most part, there was about a three or four minute stretch in the first half where they where they got out of it. For the most part, they played to those strengths. 
Jeff? Yeah, I mean, I'll take it one step further, and I've said this earlier this year. You had a bunch of guys that lost last year that had something to prove, right? Everybody talked about them, whether it was Baycott, RJ. It was a disaster of a year. Harrison Ingram, you know, was a big-time recruit who came into Stanford and lost. Cormac Ryan lost a million games last year. Elliot Cadeau comes in and a reclassified point guard, and everybody's telling him this, this shit never works, right? Everybody fails who's a reclassified point guard. Um, so I think they all had something to prove. They came together. They did it. They won enough early that I think, again, Hubert was able to kind of get them on the same page of like, hey, if you guard, and they won early in ACC play, especially on the road. You know, I was there at that game at Clemson. That was a huge one for them to kind of get their confidence and realize like, all right, we, we don't have to outscore people. We can actually guard a little bit too. Yeah, I think to me what what stood out in this particular game, and I agree with everything you guys just said, but what stood out to me in this particular game was every time that there was a loose ball, North Carolina got it. Every time that there was a possession where you're like, okay, Duke needs a bucket here. Right. This could kind of get things going in their favor. This is where they take the lead. This is where they cut it to one. This is where they get it back to one possession. Every single time you ran into a situation like that, North Carolina got the stop. I, I felt like what we were watching, Doug, is exactly what these rosters are. You got a bunch of veterans, a bunch of older guys that have taken their lumps, that have been beat up yeah. a little bit, that understand that, okay, look, I'm going to have to put my ego aside because I'm not going to come out. Like you're Harrison Ingram, right? You're not going to be a top 10 pick anymore. So you go out there, you do a job, you're going to win at a high level, and maybe proving that you are this guy that can fill a role will get you a job at the NBA level, maybe the G League level, maybe overseas, whatever it is. I think what you're seeing with these Duke guys is two to three years younger that don't quite understand that, okay, everyone has to sacrifice themselves a little bit for the betterment of the whole, right? And, and look, all credit goes to Cormac Ryan. He hit some absolute daggers tonight where it's going up and you're just like, it's one of those this. ones right we've been waiting yes. for this all year for him all year mm -hmm. and i'm sure oh, it felt let me, good let me, to have let me let me get on the back out. of what you what, let me get in the back Go of what ahead. you said uh uh rob is you're right like i was uh in the first six or seven minutes of the game where we were doing the broadcast from is in the corner and so seth greenberg and jay will were behind me while we're doing the radio broadcast. And I had said, like, that's three. Like, the first three balls on the floor, North Carolina's on the floor. You're like, what? Mm -hmm. Like, that's how Duke – like, that's what Duke is synonymous with, right? And, um, you know, I don't do the who wants it more, but yeah, North Carolina was willing to sacrifice more. There was even a play in the second half where Elliot Cadu kind of deflected the ball and was going out of bounds, and he made the super smart play, dove after it, and then threw it towards his backcourt which is how you're taught. And then Ingram went after it, didn't get it, flipped, got it, threw it to somebody, and they knocked down the shot. So it looked like, well, Duke won the possession because they hit a three, but the reality was two Carolina players both diving on the floor, zero Duke players diving on the floor, right? And so I'm, I'm not going to sit here and do the, hey, they're entitled, but you're totally right, Rob. Like, that's a, that's a, that's a great way to express it. Like, these are guys that are they're just playing to win. That's their only agenda. They'll do anything it can to win. And when you're still young, like you're still like trying to prove yourself. And you think the way to prove yourself is give me the ball and I'm going to prove myself, you know, and then that, that ain't how it works. You know, you got to do all those, the little things. What, what proves you, if you didn't need to do the little things, if you did all the big things, you wouldn't be in college for two or three years, you know, you'd be playing in the league. So um, I, I think it's a great point you make. They played to their rosters. I was, Really impressed by the toughness uh, of of North Carolina. That was a the first half. It felt like they didn't call any fouls. Like it was really they let them play. That's why the trip was a big thing. Like I know on social media it's a big thing, but there was like a bunch of plays that preceded the trip. They were like wow that was a foul. Well that was a foul. They, they just get let it go. And so uh, and I thought that usually in a game like that, usually Duke wins. I mean, again, you look at the history of, of the last 25 years. When it's just that we're not calling any fouls, it's who's more physical. You know, plus it's at Duke. They're diving. They're taking charges. They're whatever. The like yeah. that, And they get the calls. That ain't this Duke team. They got a couple calls in the second half to help them. Um, several, in fact, that helped them. But Carolina 
played more physically and I guess harder. Like that's, you know, effort plays 50, 50 balls are 50, 50 for a reason. It's supposed to be both guys going after it. And only the Carolina guys kind of went after it. That was a weird deal. Yeah. Jeff, real quick. We'll talk about the, the, the Filipowski trip here in a second. Do you have North Carolina? Where do you stand on them? Big picture, right? Earlier on in the year, we were all kind of saying, yeah, they're, you know, it's UConn, Purdue, and Carolina. Then they lost three out of five. A couple of them were on the road. Um, and now, you know, they, they're going to win the ACC by, by, well, they've won the ACC by two full games. There are two seed on our most recent bracket. And if they go and win the ACC tournament and they get a little bit of help by, I don't know, like Tennessee and Arizona dropping a couple more games. They got an outside shot at getting that last number one seed. Where do you view them kind of in the uh, the hierarchy of college basketball right now? I mean, they've been almost as good as anybody from start to finish this year, right? They've been pretty darn consistent. Um, mm-hmm. They went on the road. They win different ways. As we've talked about, they got different guys who step up. Um, so I have them, like, again, they're right there. They've got a chance to win the whole thing this year. They legitimately have a chance because they have a guy who can put the ball in his hands and you can trust him. He didn't play great today, R.J. Davis, and that was the beauty of this win. They went at Duke, at Duke, with R.J. Davis playing probably his, like, C-minus game. Armando Baker playing his C-minus game. Cormac Ryan was terrific. Uh, Harrison Ingram was solid, probably even better than solid. They've just got a lot, like Doug said, you know, you got Withers making contributions, Trimble guarding at a high level right now. Like, I just like how they fit together in, in their roles and they they accept uh, and embrace their roles. So I, I would put them right there behind UConn, Purdue, Houston, maybe with Houston. Yeah, that's, that's about where I have them. They're like the – to me, they're number five out of that top five group, but um... – yeah, wait, 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 wait! Very, you, you, didn't think, you didn't think you didn't think Armando Baycott played well? He was okay, like at times. I thought at times he did. The great thing about Mondo this year, Doug, is he doesn't try to do too much. That's the beauty no, but, of Mondo. But, like, but this, but this matchup is different because they can't guard him. Right. Right. Flip and can't guard him. That. Right. The only guy that can guard him is Ryan Young. A little bit. He scored one on on Ryan Young, but then Ryan Young. Has it's zero offensively outside of offensive rebounds, so uh, I thought he was good, and I thought RJ was good because of the reason that you said he had a he had a big drive and finish, he had a big three in the first half, but he he played within himself, you know. And the issue has always what was always last year is you know you had two guys that were like they were like competing with each other for FGAs, so. I thought that was that was a major breakthrough for them. That but why RJ ultimately why because RJ knows he's going to get the ball back now. That's the key, right? That's what you're saying right now. Is is like well, he can no, give it's because they they have a point guard, Jeff. That, that that's the biggest thing. They have they have, they have, they have a point guard. Yeah, yeah. yeah they have they, they, they have, a, they have a point guard, and and he doesn't require he doesn't require shots. Yeah. You know, they're going under ball screens. He's still driving on them. You know, and like you said, Mondo is not. He's not forcing it for the most part. Cormac Ryan doesn't force it. Ingram doesn't force it, but makes plays. Like it's a good basketball team, and the bench ain't bad either. You know, so I, I was. You agree you know, they can win this whole thing? Do you guys yeah. both think they can win this whole thing? They can win six. Yeah, they beat, yeah, ten, they beat Tennessee. They just beat Duke and Duke. Why, why can't they? I mean, none of these teams. And you're not going to play uh-huh. at Carolina, or they're not going to play at UConn or at Purdue or Houston until Elite Eight at the earliest. Yeah. So yeah, why not? I mean, Cormac Ryan's twenty-five, 25 years old. Like, 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 dude, Armando Baycott has no. I'm serious. He's twenty-five years old, and Armando Baycott <laughs> is uh, yeah, like literally has played a national championship game. R.J. Davis has played that. Like, they have experience that that few can replicate. The only team I think that can replicate it really is probably Arizona, right? And UConn. Um, yeah, because Arizona That's has it. two guys That's that are starting national championship. That, hey, we need that national semifinal matchup. Carolina, yes, Arizona. please, yes, that would be right? so much fun. We'd to all sign up for that. I want in Phoenix, before, before in we Phoenix, get, Ooh. Yeah. in Phoenix, be good, yeah, yes, yes. All right, before we uh, we got to get to break here in about three minutes. I do want to touch on the Duke side. Um, the Goodman, do you have any opinion on this this Filipowski trip? I think it just kind of. I don't want to make it bigger than what it's probably going to end up being because it's a Duke player tripping a guy. 
Shouldn't do that. Probably a dirty play. It is what it is. I think we all need to move on, but no one's going to move on because it's Kyle Filipowski who just pretended, or I don't want to say pretend, who just had the whole thing um, at Wake Forest with the, the fans storming the floor. It's going to be a big thing. I hope it doesn't become a huge thing. I'm much more interested in talking about how, like, Duke just won 16 out of 18, and they didn't look all that impressive tonight at home with an ACC title on the line. But you know on all the shows Monday, all those people that don't follow college basketball, what are they going to be talking mm-hmm. about Monday? Flip strip, Philip flip strip, and yes. and again, like, listen, he's not the villain that that Grayson was, who did it over and over. He's not the villain that Leitner or Reddick were. Like, he's Duke's best. Hey, I'm not even sure he's Duke's best. All those guys he's, stayed I'm four years. Let's get flip here for four years and see what happens, Jeff. Let's get him for four Good years. Point. You don't know, Good I, I, Jeff. I, I mean, I, I just, I disagree. I disagree with you on the like. He's not Grayson because Grayson, it was repeated trips, right? Yes, but he's on that same path as all these all these guys, right? No, he just no is. Way. No way, no way. I don't. He's not good enough. He's not good enough. He's, he's not a late sophomore. He averaged. No, I mean no. Reddick. I again, like I'm. I'm trying to remember Reddick as a sophomore. I mean, he's like what seventeen a night, like. Pretty good. Yeah, that that was the year they made the I, final four. That was the, 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 they lost to UConn in the final four. He was he was like they you knew he was going to be an All American then. He had more shit to him. Yeah, and Reddit, JJ had more shit to him. That was the difference. He had more shit to him. Like Flip has some, it, it grows over a, time. Okay, whatever. The point is, look, it 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 it's kind. If, if it wasn't for the fact he plays at Duke and he just claimed attempted murder at Wake Forest. It would be a total non-story, but we can't make up the fact that he plays at Duke, okay, and that he just avoided the murderous uh, student section from from Wake Forest. So, look, I will tell you, I thought, I, I thought Shire, I thought Shire coached a really good game. Like it's it's weird. Like you sit there and go, like, wait a second, they lost. Like, hold on, Flip got his third personal foul. And I don't know if you saw, like midway through the second half, he was offensive defense subbing to make sure that Flip didn't pick up that fourth foul. You know, he was mm-hmm. finding some good miss. I, so I don't think the problem is Shire in the X and O's. I think they haven't done a great job of role establishment. And some of that is because of the youth, some of that is because he's had injuries. Hasn't been able to do it, and some of that is right. I don't think he's really that ex- that that's where his inexperience shows. It's not in the coaching. The game coaching he might be better than Gay, right? Those old guys they don't do the adjusting stuff. They don't have the. I'm just telling you, they just don't. They just we we do what we do and we do it well, right? And they got to adjust. It takes a takes you a real a long time to move an old coach off of what he's always done. Okay, because we go in like the 2010 season when they totally changed the way they guarded and played Zubek. Like that took a long time to get the the assistants took a long time to get him there. So he's movable in terms of what they're doing in lineups, but the 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 lack of role acceptance and his what you do and uh, it's you know um, I, I think that's the problem as far as the trip is concerned. It's look when I say it's a dirty play, you say it's a dirty play. That doesn't mean you suspend him the next game. That's just now all of a sudden we're all looking for it, and he's he well, that we take the, uh, the halo he, 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 off he, of he, off his head. Yeah, yeah. You just now he has the reputation, so everyone is going to be looking for it because of these last two things that happened. So if there's another incident, it's gonna blow up. So just flip. Don't don't trip anyone else anymore. Let's just let it go from here. Let's Are you see. tripping, dog? Uh, Are you tripping? <laughs> hey, you know who was tripping tonight? Reed Shepard, he was unbelievable. Kentucky goes to Knoxville, gets a win. That's next. What's going on, guys? Before we get back to the show, I need to let you all know about the Field of 68 Daily, an all-encompassing college basketball newsletter that arrives in your inbox, you guessed it, daily. For less than a dollar a week, you'll wake up every morning to more than 1,500 words detailing everything that you need to know to stay up to date on the world of college basketball. From the notable mid-major upsets to the stars that are out injured, to the breakout performances that only our team of college basketball junkies watched. The Daily is edited and produced by Mike Miller, who spent more than two decades running NBC's digital written content, and is subscribed by more than half of the Division I coaching staffs, the biggest names in college basketball media, and the agents that work as power brokers in the sport. For just $50 for the year, 
you get access to the same information that the insiders get. And before we get you back to your regularly scheduled Field of 68 content, let me tell you guys about the Field of 68 merch store. Head over to fieldof68.shop for officially branded Field of 68 apparel. Whether you're supporting your favorite team in the student section or from the couch, there is no better way to gear up than the latest from the Field of 68. The best thing I can say about our merch is the quality of the product. Anyone that has ever worn a t-shirt knows how frustrating it is when the neck gets all stretched out and the bottom of the shirt starts looking like the bottom of bell-bottom jeans. And there's nothing worse than a hoodie that loses its snugness that makes it such a perfect way to stay warm during the cold winter weather. Whether you're shopping for yourself or for the college basketball fan in your life, everything you need is at the Field of 68.shop. Well, welcome back to the Saturday evening edition of The Field, 68 After Dark. We are live on Sirius XM, where you're streaming over on our YouTube channel. Jump in the chat, fire away, ask us some questions. We'll be answering them in the afters. We have Jeff Goodman. We have Doug Gottlieb, uh, who is a business school grad that apparently does not realize he should be eating the P.F. Changs. But we don't have that sponsorship deal yet. We got to get that sponsorship first, Doug. We got to work on that. You got to get us that. Uh, you got to get us paid to be able to be out here promoting how delicious PF Chang's is. Shout out to PF Chang's. Um, we got to talk about Kentucky and Tennessee graduate graduate hotels. Yeah, you do have that sponsorship. Yes. Graduate hotels. There you go, smart man. Um, all right, Kentucky at uh, Tennessee, 85-81. Reed Shepard goes nuts in the second half. Finishes with twenty seven points, six boards, five assists, nine to fourteen shooting, seven to ten from three. He was so good that nobody even really noticed that Dalton Connect went absolutely nuts. Finished with 40, 14 for 29 from the floor. Um, Goodman, just this Kentucky team, they now have four wins over top 10 net opponents. Uh, there are times, I, I honestly cannot believe the team that I saw tonight in Knoxville, in Thompson Bowling, was the same team that I watched with my very own eyes in Rupp Arena five weeks ago that was an unbelievable performance one of the most entertaining basketball games i've seen this season and uh yeah they got 81 points from dj wagner i'm sorry from justin edwards uh, antonio reeves reed shepherd and robert dillingham they got exactly zero points from their big guys what do you make of kentucky's win at tennessee i mean this is the beauty of this team right i mean they're fun as hell to watch they can cook they got guards that can just go make plays uh, every time the ball leaves uh, Reed Shepard's hands, I, I think it's going in, I, honestly. And Antonio Reeves has been – I right? swear I've never I mean, seen it's him crazy. Win. It is crazy. And Reeves is so good. I think he's gone for 20-plus in seven straight games now. Um, I, I actually think the best part of, of, of this game and really over the past few weeks is the emergence of Justin Edwards. He's a real weapon mm -hmm. now. Like a legitimate weapon. Like he made huge shots today. Um, you know, again, the fact that they can go in and win these road games at Auburn, which we were at, which they dominated that one, and then at a Tennessee team that I get it, they're not playing for an SEC regular season title, but you know what they are playing for? A number one overall seed. They went into mm -hmm. Bowling uh, Arena. Thompson and, Bowling. And Thompson Bowling, sorry. <laughs> Uh, I was going to say Bowling Green Arena. Uh, Thompson, we, we saw, I saw the wheels uh, spinning. I was like, oh, he needs yeah, help. Yeah, Someone I'm save right. him. Someone save him. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, and, and got a win in against one of the best teams in America. Now, again, like they've got so many weapons. That's the beauty. Now, what they don't have is anything up front. And, and that scares the hell out of me because I think they're going to have a game where they don't guard at all. We know that. Like for every three of these, they're going to have one stinker. And they're going to have one in the tournament, right? Out of their, if they get to the final four, let's say, they're going to have one game where they're just not good and they don't shoot it well from three and they probably don't guard. Can they find a way to not grind out a win? Because they can't. They can't grind out a win. But can they find a way to somehow play together, be adequate defensively, and figure it out. They've got so many dudes who can score. It's I, crazy. I would kind of argue. I would kind of argue. And Doug, tell me if you think this is this is wrong. They kind of ground out this win, right? Like Dalton Connect got his. He got his forty. They held everybody else uh, to fourteen for Ziegler forty-five shooting from the floor. Yeah, Ziegler was really good. 
he was six for 14 from like it wasn't like he was out here okay he finished with 17 and all right yes he was really he was good. good but you got you got a a, a great game from dalton connect you got a very yes. very good game from zakai ziegler and kentucky went on the road and they still beat tennessee right like i i feel like this is kentucky's version of grinding out a win like this is what they have to do they're never going to be prime virginia right they're never going to be virginia from 2019 when they won the national lean into who you are home. dude yeah and right, get enough right. lean, lean into be who you are enough. yeah it's like it's it's like this rob everybody hates jeff right so you lean into that you don't try and like win people over like you don't have a fun personality <laughs> people don't like you so just be that guy it's okay right it it's the same it thing does. with can to say Hey, Doug, go F yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm messing with you, bro. I'm, so, I'm messing with you. Oh, I'm, standing there, I'm sitting there with Greenberg. I wanted to start texting you about Greenberg and wait for you to text me back. Oh, my God. You two are how like, is, is two like arch enemies. Uh, he's great. Anyway, Good. he's great. Tell him I said um, hello. I will, I will definitely do that. Okay. So, do. Rob, as you know, I told Jeff I, on our show on Stadium, I pushed all those chips in. Now it was a little premature on Big Z. I saw him once and I fell in love. <laughs> we all but, did. We all like, did. Come on. I mean, right? I got. It. I got it. Whatever. It, but I still love. I like this team. I have no idea if they can win a national championship. Hell, if they can win a game. I think they can win a game. But they're fun, right? They just go out there and hoop. He's put in some different stuff. He has some good actions. And then, you know, Dillingham just goes and gets his. And then Shepard is just this calm, like, knows how to – way above – beyond his ears. Honestly, the guy who kind of stinks to me, and I know he played well against Arkansas, but Arkansas stinks, is I'm yet to see a game where I will go like, I get it with DJ Wagner. I get it. You know, I just – I, and I know he's a freshman, and I know it's a very different form of basketball. I've said this forever. And what he, I've said this since I saw I him just, in AU ball. I just, he's a good, nice player. But you know what? He's a great player to have coming off the bench, Doug. He's great because now again, if he I mean, guards he's, it, he's up, he's got. There's some. Let's just say this. There's some Bronny James to DJ Wagner's rating. There, you're just like what? Oh, agreed, right, agreed. But he was yes. bigger and stronger um, than everybody when he was rated yes, number one. Yes, that's he's a lot like um oh uh what Muhammad, what was what Lou was Shabazz the Muhammad. he played for Muhammad. UCLA? Shabazz. Shabazz, Shabazz Muhammad. Remember Shabazz Muhammad goes to UCLA and he's like six five and like how does he just a scoring machine in high school? You know, in high school you're six five and your scoring machine is totally different than six five in college at a score. Anyway, uh, I really like the team. That's a hell of a win. I mean, like you said, like to win on the road when Dalton Connect has forty, like what? Incredible! It's Incredible. crazy. And Ziegler went bad. Um, that you, if you're going to beat them, you know you're going to have to make them guard for longer stretches of time, and you're going to have to withstand the fact that they're going to have some runs. Now they have some; they can go through some crazy shot selection. Guys can get thirsty, but I, I mean, I'm going to credit. Uh, credit coach Cal, he's done a really good job with this group, and he's changed. You know, they used to just run floppy every time down the court. They got some different mm -hmm. actions they run, and he's leaned into this, like, let's go. Let's go play fast. Let's go have fun. Let's go get buckets. This is our way to win. So I'm I'm much – I've been in on Kentucky, and there was definitely a moment there a couple weeks ago where I was like, damn, I look like the biggest dummy ever because they're not coming together. <laughs> but uh, but now I look smart, so I'll I'll take it for the night. Yeah, I'm 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 all the way in on Kentucky. Um I think that they the the way that they can put up points is something that we don't see very often. The fact that Man. look, we gave we gave North Carolina a lot of credit where for having a bunch of guys on the roster that have accepted the roles that they need to play. I think we have to give Coach Cal a lot of credit, a ton of credit for accepting that he has a new group here that is not going to be able to do the shit that he normally wants to do. Right, like we, you're not going to be yeah. able to play like you have Carl Towns and throw the ball in the paint and dominate on the glass and and do all the stuff that you want to be able to do as Coach Cal from like 2015, 2016, 2017, right? And he's leaned into it, and I think that that was uh, probably an acquired taste for him a little bit based on what we've seen like the last five years. So um, I think you have to give him a lot of credit for the coaching job that he's done. And here's the other part, Jeff: when when things went bad. 
it could have gone really south really fast, right? And it did not. It, it, he was able to yeah. keep this group together. He's able to keep yeah. Rob Dilling. Like Rob Dilling, was and, happy and, and it's and it's gone. It, and it's and look, you factor in it gone bad the past couple of years, right? right? So there's a little bit of a here we go again when it was when it was going bad. Uh, can I just 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 one thing officiating thing? Like, why are we giving John Calipari a technical foul for leaving the coaching box when he's trying to sub a guy? Because in the game? because it, again, it's the same thing. The problem is every game it's the same shit. So these refs are tired of him who, being relentless all over because they don't who shut cares? up. They don't shut up. Who cares? And he's not alone. What do you mean? Who cares? How do the refs? It it's it's March, like they are all over the. Place. I don't think that's what it's about. I, I I don't think that's what it's about. I think I think it's about the fact you have a couple of these guys who are on the court, so they all got a memo from their boss, like, "Hey, keep these guys in the freaking coaching Maybe. box, right?" But I think, and so he got it. warned a bunch. But again, there's like some context here. He wasn't go- when he got the T. He wasn't going crazy about the game. It was he was trying to sub his guy in, and and somebody was asleep it's not at, about at the wheel. The one example yeah. is what well, I'm trying no, to tell no, you. It's no. not about. That I understand. One thing. Not, but here, I understand. Oh, hey, oh, but in the context I'm, 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 of, I feel like a, I feel like I have to play a marriage counselor right now with you two. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> all that happened was the rep had warned him earlier. Um, <laughs> the rep had warned him earlier, came over and said it I to him again, or sponsor. turned around as Cal's yelling at the thing, and all he did was see Cal out of the box after he had warned him and lit him up. Right? The rep didn't understand the context. That's my that's my that's my point. Yeah. That's my point. Yeah. I'm not saying that guys don't deserve technical fouls. That wasn't something worthy of that's just having rabbit ears and he's out of the box. Kim, like, dude, relax. <laughs> relax. Do your job. 100 percent what happened. Listen, uh, we're gonna take a quick break here. On the other side, we're gonna talk a little bit about Tennessee, whether or not we're worried about them, whether or not they still deserve to be in the same conversation as the Houstons and the Yukons of the world. That's next. The best month of the year is here, which is why you need to know that we are now partnered with BetMGM. We'll be using BetMGM Limes to make all of our picks, and we'll have special offers for the listeners and the viewers of the Field of 68 throughout the conference and NCAA tournament. If you haven't signed up for BetMGM yet, you can use the bonus code FIELD150, and you'll get $150 in free bets on your first wager with BetMGM, regardless of whether or not that bet is hits here's how you make it work download the bet mgm app and sign up using the bonus code field 150 deposit at least five dollars and place your first wager on any game and you get 150 dollars in free bets regardless of the outcome just make sure you use that bonus code field 150 when you sign up and most importantly we have some fun stuff coming up for the conference tournaments and for the ncaa tournament bet insurance tokens college hoops odds boosts and what i love the most a nice little parlay boost as well as a ridiculous array of prop bets for anything that you could possibly imagine betting on in march and in early april bet mgm is the king of the prop bet so go download the bet mgm app use field 150 as the code and sign up today and while i've got you here a quick request the best way to support the field of 68 content that you get here for absolutely free is to engage with it rate and review the podcast like and share youtube videos tell your friends about us it all helps in a world where the algorithm is king and now back to our show welcome to the saturday evening edition of the field of 68 after dark doug uh, Doug gottlieb jeff goodman rob dosser we are live on sirius xm we're streaming over on youtube jump in the chat fire away ask us some questions gentlemen real quick before we move on to uh to other games in college basketball from tonight i want you guys both to give me about a minute and a half here on tennessee jeff we argued about this a little bit before we hit record are you worried about them are you do we overrate them do we do we jump the gun on saying that they are a, a an elite national title contender or no yeah i mean like in a sense that that we put them above everybody not named uconn and purdue i I don't think they're above the carolinas i don't think they're above houston i think those teams are all kind of thrown in a hat right now arizona may be one of those uh although kai boswell still is the key for me 
whether Arizona is in that tier or not. Uh, but I think you have five, six teams, maybe more, in that kind of second group right now. And Tennessee's one of them because they have a go-to dude who just put up 40, and they have a really good point guard. The, the, my worry has always been the rest of this team, is it good enough? Like, they're, they're decent players, but none of them scare you. So, like, Connect went for 40 and they lost at home. Now, they lost to a really good team today. Uh, but what if he doesn't go for 40? What if in the NCAA tournament he has a 3 for 15, 3 for 18 game? Are they capable? They don't guard like they used to. That's the one thing. You, you, I mean, again, hard to measure it against this Kentucky team, but they're still not nearly as, as good defensively as they have been over the last couple of years. But they got a dude. They got a dude. So, yeah, they have a chance. I mean, they're third in adjusted defensive efficiency. Like they, they can still, they yeah, can still good. lock you up when they need to, Doug. But um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm in. I'm not selling any, any stake. I'm not selling any land on Tennessee Island. I will stay there by myself if I need to. I think they're right there with the Yukons and Purdue's and the Houston's of the world. I love them. I don't like their depth as much as those other ones. Uh, especially Houston. Houston's a really deep team, and I think Yukon's developed some depth. Um, especially when the big dude was out. Um, but I'm, I'm with you. I mean, had they won like seven in a row before they lost that game? Like, so like college basketball has happened. It doesn't happen or it has happened this year a little bit more at home to some of these teams. I'm surprised there. I don't think Viscovi really knows what he's, what his role is, what he's supposed to be doing here. Right. Like his job is to knock down shots. It's, it's changed. So I think that's one reason that they're not, maybe yet to where they still could be. I still think there's another gear there. Um, so I'm, I'm more with Rob. Do I have my worries about Tennessee and their usual departure, you know, under Rick Barnes in the NCAA tournament? Of course. But you got a good point guard, and you got an absolute bucket, walking bucket, and you have a, a program that, that defends. So I, I'm not selling stock. I don't think they're a one seed. Um, and I, and, you know, I know we got to get to the conferences. Like, I think more well, who, of the SEC is, than uh, I think anybody else. Who is, who's the fourth one seed for you? Not, not who has the resume to be it, but who is that, that fourth team that you would put on that one seed line, all things else, uh, everything else being equal. I mean, if you win the ACC and you beat Duke at Duke and you, you beat Tennessee who won the SEC, then I kind of think it's North Carolina. I'm with you know, you. I'm with you a thousand percent. Um, you know, I, I think we got we got to start doing this thing. And I understand that you don't have e-balanced schedules. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the league championships don't mean as much as they used to. I understand. You don't have the true round robin. What the Big East has doesn't mean nearly as much. On the other hand, when you win your league by a substantial margin and you've beaten the best teams in your league and you've beaten those teams, especially if you beat them on the road, I mean, it's one of the things about Purdue. It's like, well, they won a lot of road games, you know, for, for as good a reputation as they have. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, I think Carolina would be that team. And, you know, then I think you're, you're looking at some Tennessee, Arizona sort of mix for that last spot. And right now Arizona's down 11 at USC uh, after beating the pants off of UCLA. So we'll, we'll see what happens there. Yeah. Um, I still think I would probably lean Tennessee. I mean, you go and you win the SEC outright. I think that's more impressive than winning the ACC. But uh, I hear you on the head-to-head -head, um, win should matter. So um, what, what, I, what I like what I like about ten, what I like about Tennessee's resume is that Bama at home is a beast, and they beat Bama at home. South Carolina, as we've seen at home, tough game, and they beat Kentucky and Rupp. Okay, mm -hmm. so it wasn't like Kentucky swept them. You know, they put up one hundred and three at Rupp Arena on Kentucky. And then, you know, they play a very, very competitive out-of-conference schedule. Um, and, but, and they did lose to all three of those teams that we're talking about. Granted, it was a long time ago, I understand. But when you line up and you say, hey, we're going to put this team here, and you, I think you gotta got to move them down the line or whatever. That would be my thing. Yep. Um, all right, Jeff, Houston. Uh, they played Kansas tonight in a battle at the top of the – Big 12, 
And Houston won 76 to 46. I believe it is the first 30 point loss that Bill Self has taken uh, as a member of the Big 12. Um, they also lost by 29 earlier this year. So I don't know if it's necessarily saying anything that crazy. Kansas just isn't really all that good. Um, Hunter Dickinson got hurt in the game. I don't know if we know any updates on that, but it looked like he uh, he did something to his shoulder. Um, dislocated, separated. I don't know if there's they put anything dislocated. out, but it was very clear. Dislocated. It was very clear what happened when he's running off, grabbing like this after someone yanks on his arm. So, um, to me, this said more about Kansas and we knew how good Houston was, but to see Kansas get their their kind of pants pulled down like this on the road in this kind of a game in that kind of an atmosphere, Jeff, that's a that's a red flag to me for this group. Yeah, when when Doug and I did our show uh, yesterday, I, I said. Listen, Houston's going to get revenge because they were embarrassed at Allen Fieldhouse. Remember, Kansas played their like their best game of the year, made every shot. Um, Shed was terrible in that game. Uh, they kind of mm-hmm. made it a game a little bit, but they should have lost by thirty. Um, so you knew they'd come out, you know, with something to prove here. And uh, Shed's been terrific. He was great today, but again, you're not playing against like the real Kansas team right now, you know, McCuller didn't play in the second half. He looks hurt every game. He comes back, you know, he's got that, that bone bruise in his knee that just hasn't healed and probably isn't going to heal. Uh, if I'm Bill Self, I'm not playing him in the big 12 tournament. There's no reason to be a one and done at this point in the big 12 tournament. Um, because honestly you need, you need rest right now. You're probably on the four line, Three, four, somewhere around there. Honestly, it probably does you better. Go to the five. Go to the five at this point. Who cares? Just get a healthy McCuller, a healthy Hunter Dickinson. Come out. Maybe maybe get, again, Timberlake more minutes. Play some of these other guys that didn't play a lot. Maybe get the confidence up a little bit. And you can make a little bit of a run. Because um, at their best case scenario, and I heard Bill Self say it today. He's like, listen, I'll take my starting five when they're healthy against just about anybody's. And he's right. He's right. But McCullough's not healthy. Hunter's not healthy now. And you have no bench. So, yeah, you'll take your starting five, but you have no bench. And uh, Furphy looked completely overwhelmed today um, physically where that wasn't the case because you're playing in the home, you know, in front of your home crowd. You get off to that great start. You make a couple of shots. You're feeling good about yourself. And today it was, it was completely the opposite. Mm-hmm. Doug? Well, if if Jeff remembers, I said he said you know he thought he thought Houston played poorly the last time. They didn't play poorly. They just Kansas made shots. I mean, go and look. And Houston had four turnovers playing there. They just Kansas made everything. And I thought that this game would go one of two ways. If it was close, I thought Kansas would win. Otherwise, I thought it'd be a, a blowout, which it was. You did say that. I, you did say that. That's right. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know that they'd shut down Dickinson and they'd shut down McCuller, but it was going that way anyway. Um, Houston's really, really good, guys. They're just really good. Yes, they. You know, they cover the earth with all that length and athleticism and toughness, and they have an elite shooter. They have an elite point guard. Uh, they have an elite coach. They have good culture. They have toughness. They're really good they're a deserving number one team and i would if we got went into it if we got into the conference discussion and you said hey is there anybody else in this league that could win a national championship i'd say no but the league is a bitch uh because they're just not a lot of easy nights you know i mean if if oklahoma state and west virginia are the easy nights first of all west virginia has got like they have actually have dudes they got talented they have a talented roster they're just a mess because you basically have an interim head coach. Um, but they only played Oklahoma State once. I think they only played West Virginia once. They played Kansas twice, play everybody, all these other teams twice. They went and beat BYU, smack BYU. Like they've played against a bunch of different styles and they've kind of vanquished them all with, you know, that one, you know, a couple exceptions here. So I like this Houston club a lot. Uh, but I'm also not selling all of Kansas stock. It does. It's like, man, did Bill sell his soul to win that national title? Because last year, remember, he was sick. And they're not the same when you don't have him. And then this mm-hmm. year, I just – the idea that those guys are going to be up and healthy and ready to go in, what is it, a week and a half? I don't know. 
I don't know. Bone bruises do not ho- uh, heal in a week and a half. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I'm I don't, I don't on. think, I don't think Hunter needs his right arm. He never uses it, you know, except to hook. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, they just have no margin for error if those guys aren't right. Yeah, and and they have no margin for error even if those guys are healthy, right? Because they basically have four and a half starters. You know, Johnny Furphy had that one three week stretch where he was unconscious and he's kind of come back to earth a little bit and you know it doesn't look like he's the second coming of Sfi anymore but um he's looked like a freshman and that's what freshmen are supposed to do look good in flashes and then struggle for flashes so I'm 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 off the Kansas Bay well, like, like 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 Tim like like Timberlake Timberlake had played a little bit better recently you know and people were mm-hmm. and then I watched him you know the way to beat Houston is you have to skip the ball because they load up defensively so much they make you throw it all the way across the court he caught one wide open and he hit backboard before rim and like mm, he he just at that level whatever it does he just well, that's doesn't a tough translate. game for him right that's a hard that's yeah a hard matchup right but that's what those are the games you're going to be playing here the next couple of weeks yeah mm-hmm. you want to go deep you, yeah. you're right yeah i'm and and look just pause one last note on Houston. pause Pause. Yeah, I heard okay, that. I, heard, I just wouldn't. I just wouldn't. <laughs> I, I just was gonna keep it moving, Doug. I was just gonna keep it moving. I was just gonna keep it moving. <laughs> all, right, all right, all right. The fact that it's completely off the rails. Um, I, I do <laughs> on Houston. You got. Um, I. am trying to be a professional out here. Yeah, you, know? you are. You are. Stop three it. weeks ago. Stop it. Three weeks ago. Four weeks ago. Like I was. I was worried about them, right? And yeah. just. I think that the the emergence, maybe emergence is the wrong word, but Emmanuel Sharp and LJ Cryer and Jamal Shedd, like they just keep on winning. If you put up the same numbers and the same winning percentage and the same totals and the same record that you did in the ACC in this Big 12, like what the hell yeah. am I supposed to say? I apologize, Kelvin. I was completely wrong. Listen, when we get back, I have to change my mindset and I have to say thank you because the win tonight and UConn's performance in Providence – was divine. By now, you guys have surely heard about Autograph, an app founded by Tom Brady with the intention of disrupting the way that fans consume content covering their favorite teams. This is how the app works. All of the podcasters, bloggers, and digital creators covering a team have their content sent to that team's page in the Autograph app. Instead of having to bounce from site to site or trying to navigate the safer workspaces on Twitter, you can just scroll through Autograph. This isn't a hard sell. This is the truth. I am a UConn fan, and I use the Autograph app to keep up with the writers I read and the pods that I listen to about UConn basketball. The best part is that every piece of content that you consume gives you reward points. The more you get, the more chances you have at things like discounted tickets to games and the grand prize, a trip to the LA Regional and a spot in a suite for the Sweet 16 and Elite Eight games. Here's the best part. We've partnered with Autograph to donate $1 to the V Foundation every time someone downloads the app using the code F68 with a minimum of $2,500 getting donated. The app is free. So download, use the code F68, help us raise a little bit of money for cancer research and give Autograph a try. I promise you it will be worth it. And while we're here, a quick reminder, make sure that you subscribe to The Daily. We have new landing pages with deep dives into each coaching change, as well as a tracker that provides scouting reports on the transfers that have entered the portal that you are going to want to know about. Hit the link below to subscribe. Welcome back to the Saturday evening edition of the Field in 68 After Dark. Uh, we are watching USC Arizona live. Arizona is down. Right now, I believe it is nine. Doug is about a minute and a half Seven. in front of my stream and in front of my feed uh, right now. So we'll talk about that a little bit in the afters when that thing goes final. Well, we have to talk about first, gentlemen. We got Doug Gottlieb. We got Jeff Goodman. My name is Rob Doster. We're live on YouTube, Field of 68 and Sirius XM. UConn, Providence. UConn goes in to Friartown, Jeff. They dig themselves a 15 to 2 hole, and then they close out the first half on a 40 to 9 run in a uh, in a ruthless environment against a team that was playing as well as we've seen them play for about a five minute stretch at the start of the game. Anything you could take away from UConn's win here, or is this just 
Providence had a chance to be able to punch their ticket to the dance with a win and they did not get it. What are your takeaways? Uh, different weight classes, Rob. Different weight classes uh, with these two programs and these two teams right now. I, I'd like to say even like with Bryce Hopkins that it would have been a different result, but it wouldn't have been a different result. Uh, this UConn team has just got so many weapons. They play so well together. Um, they don't really have any any major weaknesses. Like even, again, you look at them and you're like, okay, Cam Spencer and Caravan aren't great athletes, but they make up for it defensively. And, and again, you know how I feel about Castle. Man, I, I think like – I just think watch out. Like I think he's going to have one of those games in the tournament where he just goes for like 22 – You know, he can just do everything. Like, that's the thing about Castle right now is, like, he can make threes, and that was the one thing that he couldn't do going into the year. But he's got great court vision. He can pass. He can get to the basket. He can guard. Again, I'll say it over and over and over. Like, I'm not letting that dude get out of the top five in the NBA draft this year. I'm not. Doug? Top five. Top five. Top five. Five. Yes, I, 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 I love him. I love the team. Uh, and I think one of the big differences is Samson Johnson's emergence since the Klingon injury gives them a big guy, gives them a different look off the bench, just a different feel. He's got he's really athletic, very quick for a guy, but he also doesn't need the ball. It's all on rolls and whatever. Um, don't love their scoring off the bench. Like, again, I'm finding a mole on a supermodel. So that's about it, right? You got like Jara can come off the bench and make a shot. But no, I like this team and they went in and and like a Saturday night in Providence, like that's a wild scene. And they <laughs> yeah, went in and banquet. Yeah, they just went in yeah. and shut them the F up. That's awesome. Think of how drunk those kids were tonight. Going <laughs> oh my like, God. It's their season. This is their season on the line tonight. They woke up and they got after it from the moment they got up and, and went out to the you know the bars or, or parties on campus, whatever it was. And they went over and they were they were so shit faced and uh, and ready for this. And it looked good for about five minutes. Wow, nice great. cut. They were celebrating for five minutes, Rob. And then UConn was just like Hurley and picked up. And the then team, what happened? And that was it. And, and then what it. happened? That was it. Danny, yeah, Danny was just like, it's over. It's over. So, I, uh, so okay, I, here's I my question really about the Big East. Go ahead. my question. Are, are we really, like, we have St. John's and Nova and Seton Hall in the tournament? Is that going to happen? Probably. Probably. I don't but think why? so. I think you. I think you get two of them. I think you get two of them. St. John's uh, plays Seton that- Hall first game, first game in the Garden, right? That's their first game? That's I right. believe that's the four-five. Yeah, yeah, loser. That one's going to be if if St. John lose. I think you, loser. That one's going to be in a rough spot. I mean, seen Hall has going for him is they beat UConn, and Marquette, and they just beat Nova, right? But outside yeah. of that, like, oh, their non-conference is shit. And then mm-hmm. you know, like, they just out. got. They're not going to keep Rick out. They're going to they'll throw him in the first four, but they'll they'll put him in there. You watch. They why know you, he'll why draw. do you think that matters? I don't think they'll that draw. Shit matters it does at all. Matter. Of course it No, matters. they don't. They don't care about draws. Yeah. If they care about draws, Syracuse would be in the first field every single time. They don't care about draws. St. Rick John's Patino. doesn't draw anybody. Are you kidding me? St. John's doesn't rate. Rick, Rick Patino. Mm, whatever, modestly. Listen, the Patinos against each other. They're both bubble teams in New Mexico. We'll get to them. They lost, whatever. And by the way, yes, see back up 10 now. Um, Put them against each other in the first four. No, no. I, don't think I Listen, I get it. It's a great story. But why do they belong in the field? The bottom of the league sucks. Okay. Okay. So why it is, sucks? Why Colorado, They've all packed up did, and gone home. We'll, we'll take Colorado over them, Doug. You happy? We'll take Iowa over them. You happy? Like, come on. Who belongs? No, but again, who, who, who belongs? Who? Okay. So yeah, who, are we, we going to do New Mexico? We do. Well, we do New Mexico and Nevada. And um, Nevada's in. Give me, uh, give me Dre. Way. Give me, give me the loser of the Missouri Valley title game. I'll take one of them over the totally the bubble team. Uh, but I will I'll, totally I'll just, because I'll, I'll because look, the like, old argument would the old argument would be like, hey, they they won in the non conference and they didn't win they didn't win shit in the non conference. Like we were talking about, like man, this is kind of like a three team league in the non conference, 
And guess what? Those three teams are better than everybody else, and they've been better. And Creighton was the only one that was shaky, Virginia? and guess what? Creighton's the one that's lost. Huh? Here's, 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 here's the best. I'll give you Virginia, Doug. Hey, Goodman, here's the best case scenario for the Big East. If you want to be able to get six teams in, this is what's going to have to happen, right? Seton Hall has 13 wins in Big East play. They beat UConn. They beat Marquette. They have all of these like big uh, statement wins in the conference. I think between the 13 wins in league play, if they, no matter what, I think that they're probably the safest out of that entire group, right? If you look at what we have right now in our most recent bracket, I believe that they are a 10 seed. So they have a little bit of room to work with, right? So I think if they lose to St. John's, that will get St. John's in the tournament. That will get Seton Hall. And Seton Hall, to me, is probably already in even with a loss. Um, yeah. You need Providence to go out and beat Creighton, I think. Providence plays Georgetown in the first round. Ed Cooley, again, has a chance to do the funniest thing ever. Um, but the Providence beats Georgetown, beat Creighton, then you get Providence in. Villanova, I, look, they already have 14 losses, man. They can beat DePaul in the first round and then beat Marquette in the second round. And I still think if they end up losing in the semifinals, you're going to have a tough argument well, to make. Marquette, in a team that has if they beat losses. Marquette with Kolek, they're Marquette. in. They're in if they beat. But Kolek's not going to play. Is Kolek going to play? Who knows? With him, he'll want I think that's the thing. If Kolek, if Kolek doesn't play, that, that's a crazy thing. Now, I don't think it matters because the numbers don't reflect as such, but they're going to beat Marquette without Kolek. Like, it, it's a. Uh, let me let me ask you about a team, okay? I'll I'll give you a team. I won't tell you who they are, okay? But they beat Creighton, okay? They have they have some bad losses in the non conference. Um, they swept New Mexico, uh, including winning at New Mexico. Uh, they beat just beat San Diego State as well. One at Boise State. Would you what What do we do if they're trailing right now? What do we do if UNLV beats Nevada? <laughs> I mean, if they beat Nevada, like UNLV or St. John's, they're they're, they're the pro- here's really the problem with UNLV is they have they have some bad, bad losses, losses on that resume. Bad. Right. Oh, it's terrible, really bad. terrible. Southern. But here's Southern. the argument that you can make. But here's here's the argument that you make, and and I would be very interested to see how right. hard they go into this. It's the same. Ar- it's the same argument you're making for all of them. Well, look Correct. At Keelan Boone got Keelan Boone, Keelan Keelan Boone gets Boone. eligible, and Deaton Thomas is their best player. He's 18 years old. Of course, he's going to suck the first month of the season. And oh yeah, by the way, all these teams we're talking about suck to start the season. Okay, it would be one thing if St. John's or or Seton Hall were good to start the year. They weren't. They sucked. And oh yeah, by the way, you don't like Iowa. Guess who Iowa beat? Yeah, <laughs> Seton Hall. Thank Seton you. Hall. Seton Hall. They beat Seton Hall. So again, um, and I'm not, and I'm not sitting here saying any of these teams are perfect, but like. I, okay, Florida Atlantic and South Florida. They should both get in, right? Well, I – look, yeah. Florida Atlantic's getting South, in. I would what love you, to see South, South Florida, Florida get in. South Florida's no. not going to – Yeah, South Florida won the league by like three games. No, yeah, no it's shot. not going to happen for them because it's the American. Listen, guys, um, for the people that are listening on Sirius XM, we are going to head over – uh, find our YouTube channel. We're going to keep this going for the people that are watching on YouTube. Hang with us. We're ending the show on Sirius XM. We'll see you guys on Sirius again tomorrow night at 11 p.m. For those on YouTube, it's the afters. Let's get weird. Guys, it's the Field of 68 uh, After Dark Afters. We are here. We are hopefully going to be joined uh, by someone from Moorhead State, um, Riley Minix, who had 26 points uh, as Moorhead State beat Little Rock in the OVC championship game to earn the first automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. I believe that will be coming here in just a couple of minutes. Um, Doug, I, I didn't want to cut you off there. We just had to, to end the show on series. Finish your point about the bubble teams because you were you were starting to get on a roll there. Well, I just – I think, like, look, this is a really hard it, – it's always hard for the committee. It's really hard for the committee because we all know the reality is that all of these teams have evolved, you know, or some have devolved, right? But they've all they've all changed dramatically. And when you have some of these teams, I mean, Seton Hall, I mean, uh, St. John's literally has a brand new team, I'm a completely brand new team. So you're not going to know who you are until like January, February. But okay, so does that mean we're not we're not valuing at all the non conference? Like, hey, non conference is meaning okay. So then there are other teams that have performed really well in conference play in other leagues. How do we evaluate them? 
do we evaluate everybody in the same same thing right and i i think it's a i personally think the last 10 15 this year might be the most important um when i look at it if i was to be on the committee i know what we're supposed to do i i do value the numbers of the net okay within reason but it's have you because that's what teams are now how did you do against the top of the league and how'd you do on the road that's really it you know you're gonna have a stinker all these teams have a stinker or two otherwise they wouldn't be on the bubble so mm-hmm. how'd you do last 15 10 15 games um how'd you do on the road and how'd you do against the top of the league so that that's right. that, that's my process to be about all right well we by wait the way for, uh, uh, sc is going to beat sc is going to beat arizona yeah, that, Doug. That's one I wanted to ask you about. Um, you're you're uh, you're kind of based out there on the West Coast. Um, while we wait for Riley to get here, uh, what do you make of this loss? All right, let's bring it. Riley is here. Let's bring in Riley Minix. Uh, Riley Minix, um, twenty six points, seven boards, a championship. Cut down the nets, Riley. Where's the net, man? We wanted you to come here with the net around your neck. What's going on? Where's the net? Where's the net? <laughs> <laughs> got you, got hey, Riley, we're right here. There you, there you go. Good to go. Right, Riley, we are live right there now. There you go. Riley. First and nice. foremost, man, congratulations on the win. Um, hell of a performance from you guys. Got a little bit nervy there in the second half. Like you, uh, you had a big lead at the start. Little Rock came back and took the lead. How did you kind of turn things around? Um, just trusting each other. Trusting. Like all the work we put in, we started June sixth. What was it? And we just we just kept going, and we were battling. We knew it was going to be a dog fight from the jump, and we just trusted each other and loved each other, and we wanted one more day with each other. So that's all we've been talking about, and, and that's what we went and did. We just fought. Riley, Riley, take me back to when you were in the portal. Okay, you're at Southeastern. You're an NAIA NAIA All American. Okay. Okay, so how did it all work? How did you decide to go in the portal? What was the contact like? Take us through the entire process. So um, I graduated from Southeastern um, in Lakeland, Florida, and I'm truly blessed for my four years there and everything that went into being in that program, and I've loved my time there. But I actually never went into the portal. Since I was in AI, <laughs> schools could reach out, and I didn't want to go into the portal and have – too many schools reaching out and not know where to go and who actually wanted me. I wanted to get found through a connection that my coaches or family had. So Moorhead State reached out through Alex Gross, who I actually played my junior year. And when he was in AI at Olivet Nazarene, and he told the coaching staff about me at Moorhead State, and they ended up reaching out. And first time they reached out, I was like, uh, Kentucky? I'm from Florida. Like, I didn't think it was going to happen. But once I came on my visit, it was a couple days after I was like, well, it was actually on my flight home. I told my parents, like, I'm coming here. Like, this is where I want to be. I love the culture they had. I love the guys. Like, it was, it's been perfect. And this opportunity that I've been given, I've been truly blessed. It was all God given. And I'm so thankful for this group and just everything that went into it. What, what's yeah, you, what's you, the biggest difference? What, what's the biggest difference in, in from NAIA to play in Division One? Um, I would say it's just more in depth. I, I've learned a lot here. There's a lot more scheming to it. At the NAIA level, I feel like my talent was shown just by doing what I did. But coming here, I've learned a lot from the coaching staff, from the guys. They've taught me plenty of things. But yeah, I would just say. It's a. It was a big learning experience coming here and having to work as hard as I could. I've I've always done that my whole life, but coming here, it was it was put to the test for sure. You've been OVC Player of the Year. You've gone for twenty in all three tournament games. My big question to you is like, okay, why weren't you recruited heavier out of high school out of Bureau Beach? Uh, it was all in God's plan. Uh, at the end of the day, I don't, I don't really know, but he had a plan for me, and I, I stuck the course, and and I'm here now, and this is a dream come true, playing with these guys and being able to get to March Madness. Like as a kid, I used to watch it on TV. Like wow, 
Like, that's where I want to play. And getting the chance to be there with, with this group and the love that we share on this team, is it's a brotherhood like no other. So I'm just truly blessed. Talk to me about that moment when you got up on the ladder and you and you cut down your portion of the net, right? What, 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 you said that you dreamed about this, right? What, what was it like finally getting up there and being able to do it? Uh, it was amazing just just thinking back since since I was a kid, like all the work I've put in on the court, off the court, uh, the man I've become. Um, just at the end of the day, I'm thankful. I'm blessed. Uh, thinking about my family, all that they've been through to get me here to this point. Um, I just, I'm speechless. Like, I'm just thankful at the end of the day. Who you want? Who you pick, want? pick your team. Who you want? Right? <laughs> you, you, you guys have played Alabama. You played Indiana. Yeah. Played almost beat Indiana. All right. You, you, you know, like, listen. You, you're not gonna, you're not gonna get some schlummy team. Okay, you've seen all the best play. Who you who you want to play against? Um, I don't really care who we get. I just know we're gonna give them a game early in the season. Uh, we were tested, and I didn't feel like we were we were fully a group yet. Yet, but throughout the season, I feel like we've really built off each other and have come together, and we're we're ready to make something happen. And give me whoever we're gonna go out there and we're gonna. We're going to put it all out there. We're going to leave it on the court, and we're not going to have any regrets. And no matter what happens, like, we love each other, and there's always going to be love there. It's, it's bigger than basketball, and it, this is this is just amazing. Listen, Riley, we appreciate you being here, man. Congratulations on that win. Don't take that net off. You got to keep that thing on, man. All right, you gotta it's you gotta so make sure that you you, you hey you hey to, you and, and tell up tell, tell Jordan Lake right now from is it from the <laughs> celebration in the locker room. That's why I didn't have it on. It's it's drenching my neck as we speak. <laughs> it's worth it, man. It is worth it. It is it's worth fair. it, Riley. What are we gonna Thanks, say, Riley. Listen, man. Appreciate you about Jordan Lake. I was gonna say, I was gonna say tell tell Jordan Lake and I said what's up. He he's uh he he played for my boy Victor Williams right growing here, up in right Kansas here. City. So I'll bring him in. He's right here. Yeah, get him so on. I got the Jordan. whole team behind me listening. So you got the whole team. Bring him on. Bring him on. What are you doing? Bring him on. Get right him here. Right here. Bring him in. Right yeah. Yeah. There it is. Jo jo Jordan. Jordan, you've been through a lot, man. You had you had injury last year, right? You had Milwaukee, UTEP, all the all the other stuff. What's it mean to finally make the tournament? It's a blessing, man. It's you know, life. Life those life is, you know, you got adversity, you got things you gotta deal with. And I just finally got to a program where I could have coaches that believed in me and wanted to see me succeed. And it's just great to be at Moorhead. Hey, I wanna know awesome Spradlin stuff. doesn't show much emotion. Like in the handshake line after the game, like nothing. It's like literally, it's like you lost his reaction. Tell me what he's like in the locker room after the game. Does he let loose? Can he dance at all? Like, what's he doing? Something? In the locker room, he he he, he danced a little bit, but he's he's a he's just a big time big time winner, and he's he his his discipline and the things that he cares about it, it it translates to us. Like when we when we were up five at halftime, he wasn't, you know, we weren't like super excited. Like we knew that we had more to give and more to like more effort to to show and I think after the game he, he danced a little bit through threw some water around and so he get fun when, what do you, when we what do you grade him wait, wait. all right what one to ten Spradlin's dancing what is it give it a grade I'm not gonna lie he don't bring it out often uh there's a reason for that <laughs> I'm probably gonna say we we got a good three yeah I'm gonna give him a four yeah, yeah. yeah it, and that's low, better than me low. so that's good. It's good. Good for him. Hey, hey, fellas, who do you keep looking at behind the behind the screen? Where's the rest of the team? Get them out there. Oh, oh we got we got a bunch of guys right here, right here. You guys, yeah. I'll show you Drew Thelwell. That's that's big shot Drew right there. We got Zeno. That Zeno, that Zeno he's he's a musician. He's got a couple nice. mixtapes out. We got Deontay, <laughs> big seven footer, and then we got a couple family members back there. Yeah, a couple. Congrats, other people guys. Back, but, 
we had a bunch Listen, of guys congrats. recording behind us. Congrats. Thank you are you earned this. Um, I, I hope it was emotional. I hope it was everything that both of you uh, thought it would be because, again, I know you, both of your roads travel was not easy to get there. So the best part now, you were the first ones who punched your ticket. You can sit there. You don't have to sweat anything out. You can enjoy the next week, eight days, and just honestly just watch ball with no pressure whatsoever. Sure. Appreciate you guys enjoy having it, us. Fellas. Thank you. You got Thank it. Thanks, thanks got for it. jumping thanks on. Thanks for thanks for don't let that net go. Molly, don't let that net go, man. That's don't right. let that I got you. No, man. It's stuck. It's stuck. Yeah. It's, there it is. It's big time. <laughs> More heads than we time. do. Oh, you, you, you know what? You know what? What's you know what's interesting though? There, guys, is like that's going to be a hard team to play against. Like Jordan Lathan, he was originally going to Northwestern, went to UTEP, started as a freshman. Like, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. and and you know Riley's a kid. Like he wasn't just a NAIA, like he was a dude in NIA, NIA, and he's a dude at this level. Like you got grown men, and that's the I difference don't now. It, right. That's the difference. With right. Some like of these mid, the mids, they're old now. They're you know you put them against maybe a younger high major team, and again, like they're grown men. They're twenty three, twenty four years old. They've been through it, and. They played against these teams in buy games. They played against them. They're not intimidated by them in a lot of ways. And and you know how those things work too is the first you know first fifteen minutes or so of the game is like a feeling out period, and then when you get to like the last ten minutes, if Moorhead State is leading any of the big oh. names, the entire crowd turns into Moorhead State fans. Right? Like I'll never forget. Like Gonzaga obviously travels well. My first year calling games for CBS was 2013 tournament. And uh, that was when they lost to Wichita in the second game. But they were tied with Southern with like four minutes and 15 seconds to go. And they're bringing the ball up the court. And Spiro Ditas and I were like, are we going to call the first 16 upset ever? Like our, my, our first game during the NCAA tournament? And – the entire crowd was, with the exception of the Gonzaga fans, was the Southern was Southern fans. You know, they're cheering for Southern. Anything they did, booing calls, and so those guys literally have nothing to lose, right? They could have stopped. They could have gone and Riley could have gone and played overseas, started his career instead. He wanted to take a shot at playing the tournament, and now he is. Like they literally have nothing to lose, and like you said, like that's the old story in a fight, right? The most dangerous guy you're ever going to fight is the guy who has nothing to lose, and that's what you have to fight when you play more head state. Yep, and it's the uh, it's the whole conundrum of once the highly ranked team uh, starts struggling a little bit, starts falling behind, um, you run into a situation where they get a little bit uh, stressed out. And I do like how we have Doug Gottlieb on screen the entire time while I'm sitting here talking. I think Dave must have fallen asleep <laughs> on the back end. Um, guys, I want to I want to get to the Arizona loss, Doug. Uh, I look, we talked about how. Well, I talked last week about how I thought Who was the dude was who, hey, He's like, my man back here is a musician. He's got to come up mixed in. He's got mixed in. <laughs> oh, <Tyler. laughs> he's got to come up mixed tapes out. Our brap. He's got to come up mixed tapes out. Yo. That was See awesome. what you got, I'm all man. in on more head state. I'm all in on more head state. I'm Me picking too. them to win whatever Me game too. they play in the first round. It doesn't matter. I'm picking them to win. Um, Arizona goes on the road. Got thumped a little bit by a USC team that really has not been all that good this year, Doug. What do you make of it? Are you concerned about Arizona? And suddenly, that 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 race for that last number one seed is a lot more interesting than it was about twelve hours ago. I'm not imperial. I'm not like super concerned. Look, USC has been a disaster not because their talent. Right? They full house tonight at the Galen Center, and they played well. Um, Arizona played really, really well, with the exception of like five minutes against UCLA uh, going back to two nights ago. So I'm not crazy concerned. But my issue with Arizona is that I'm not sure they have a dude, right? Like Caleb Love wants to be that guy, but I don't know. Um, and I, they cover better on the perimeter. Like Kylan Boswell covers better. Than Kirk Creason did, but he's it's it's not like they just clamp you, right? Defensively, um, you know, and they're just kind of limited. Keyshawn Johnson hit another three today. That's two uh, one in each game, but they're not really perimeter oriented big. 
they're big, they're physical, they beat you up. Uh, but I thought they struggled a little bit with the athleticism of USC. And I that's kind of what concerns me is, can a smaller team give them trouble by spreading them out? And then, you know, when things get tough, do they take bad shots and make bad decisions? That, that's my concern. But again, like, I think they're really good. I'm judging them on a more difficult grading scale, the, the same grading scale we judge UConn on and Purdue on and Tennessee on and, and North Carolina on. One guy to run the team. One guy to run the team. His name's Kai Boswell. And if yep. he's not playing well and he didn't play well tonight, they don't win games. They don't win games, period. Mm-hmm. Like, and Caleb Love didn't play well either. So then you're screwed. Um, you can't have both of them not playing well. You're not going to beat anybody. You'll lose. You'll, you'll, you'll do what Lute Olson did three of uh, the four years that I was at Arizona. You'll lose in the first round if you have both of them. Uh, and but, don't but tell But I the would joke. also, like, like look, joke, I'll, like, Whatever you do, uh-huh. don't tell the joke again. What, that the Lute Olsen's bar in Tucson yeah. used to have to leave after the first round? Yeah, I won't tell you the stop. joke. stop. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but, but, but here's the, here's, the, here's the thing. Like, let's also give a little bit of respect. Maybe not respect, but credit to USC. Like, USC's got some talent you, there. Yeah. What do you mean? You've, you've just bashed Bronny all year. <laughs> all of a sudden, you're going to give him credit? I wasn't talking about Bronny. Like, he right. can't get on the court because the other guys are good, right? I think Brian's going to be a good college player eventually. I just don't, like, I don't understand the rush him to the NBA thing. Like, I, he doesn't, I don't won't. get it. Hopefully they won't. They'll oh. give him one more year. I don't know, but my, my point my point is, like, look, Boogie Ellis has been in college forever, and with the exception of his year at Duke, he's scored a lot of points. So it shouldn't be surprising. Like, they're a team with NIL – they're, they're kind of this dysfunctional group that hasn't been that good. The bigs don't really get involved in what they do. And, um, you know, they won a game tonight. But I don't think it's like sell all stock in Arizona. Um, but And and remember, Arizona is going to do the – what, they'll do Vegas this week and then Vegas for the tournament and then L.A. if they get to the – probably the Sweet 16 and then to potentially Arizona. So they'll be playing – Prohibitive home crowds. It doesn't always work out for Arizona, right? When they played, I don't think they've ever won when they've been in Anaheim um, in terms of getting to the Final Four. But they're in LA this year. So we'll see. Like, I, I, I like them. I don't, I'm not like in love with them just because I, I, like you said, they don't have multiple break you down ball handlers. I think really athletic backcourts can give them trouble. And I'm not sure they have a dude who can do what Dalton Connect can do. And I think they, they might actually have the worst part, which is at times Caleb Love thinks he's that guy, and I don't know if he's that guy and he can shoot you out of a game. Yeah. No, that's pretty much it. Um, I do want to talk about the Mountain West, okay? Doug, I made a joke earlier that uh, that you're not going to be happy about having to talk about the Mountain West. Um, I love this. Sarca- that was sarcasm. It was, sarcasm. it was definitely sarcasm. It was definitely sarcasm. But um, – I love this league. We saw an insane game tonight. Utah State beat New Mexico. Uh, Darius Brown hits a three with, I think it was 4.4 seconds left to give them the lead. New Mexico's in a, a, a bad spot when it comes to making the NCAA tournament now. Utah State wins the outright Mountain West regular season championship. Um, last night, we had an even crazier game. Boise State goes into Viejas, goes into San Diego State, and knocks off San Diego State. Max Rice hits this ridiculous half-court shot. Like, and that's been like an every night thing for the Mountain West is these insane, ridiculous basketball games because everybody in the league is like as good as each other. And all of these teams don't really play the same kind of defense that they're going to play in the Big 12. And you got a bunch of shot makers and you got a bunch of coaches that like to just kind of let their nuts hang. And these players that just want to go out there and prove what they like. I love everything about this conference. It's been the most entertaining league in college basketball this year to me. And uh, I hope they get six teams in. I want to see them get seven teams in. And I hope they have some uh, more success than they've had in the non-San Diego State years where they've made runs in the tournament. So uh, I I don't know. I'm just teeing you up, man. I know you love the Mountain West like I do. What do you got? Uh, You know, uh, you guys know my brother was in that league as an assistant Mm -hmm. On the men's side for eight years, he's on the women's side with San Diego State this year. Um, I've covered it for years. It's awesome. I mean, far and away the best of the, in the West United States. And again, there's no—I I think we'd all agree—there's no Final Four team 
in that. And I know last year there was a San Diego State. I think if San Diego State had Keisha Johnson, uh, Maybe. It, it, yeah. they'd have a. I mean, they win the league. They probably would have won the league, and then we'd see in terms of they would definitely be several slots higher. But um, it's a good league. It's got good older players. It's really well coached. They're well. They got good resources. I mean, I the weird one like Boise's a weird one, right? And they won that game last night, but they've lost some home ones that are weird. Nevada wasn't expected to be much. I mean, Utah State wasn't either. And now, look, Utah State they have survived. They, that UNLV win was a crazy one. Tonight's was a crazy one. Um, I actually think I think they're pretty good. I think they're all pretty. Like Colorado State was like everybody's darling to start the year, and they're right there on the bubble too. So I don't know how you decipher other than I, I, I guess you Colorado just watch State the conference the tournament. Yeah, I think Colorado State is is fairly comfortably in. I think that they're going to be dancing. Um, I, I think we had them as a nine seed in our most recent fielding, the 68 bracket. But here's this wild, Doug. They're a nine seed in the NCAA tournament. I believe that they're going to be a seven seed in the Mountain West tournament. I know. That's, <laughs> think about that. That's that's crazy. What is happening here? Well, if some of it. Keep, keep, well, you, you have to keep. You have to also keep in mind. Better. Like, listen, keep keep in mind. Keep in mind, it's not a balanced schedule. So, like Utah State, I think they got Everything. San Jose twice. No, but Everything but but it's like if you don't get. Yeah, but if you don't get like everybody on the road, you're supposed to get like the top teams on the road. It's a it's a different deal now. Um, I I love the league too, and there's like a guy on each team. That's a stud, you know. Yes. Dagan Hart and Rice are awesome. D. Dan Thomas from UNLV is only a freshman, awesome player, like really, really talented. Kind of has a little bit of he's like a little bit bigger Damon Stoudemire, like that. Yeah, I think Doug froze. Uh, here's the biggest thing, Goodman. You just got to keep D. Don Thomas off of the bird scooters. <laughs> yeah, that too. That. that too. I just want to <laughs> see them get like. My take is if they can get six oh, in. Can we, can we talk about the photo now? Doug is frozen right now. <laughs> that is a good photo, Doug. What you know what? Honestly, I think the PSA's got him, man. No, I think no, the PSA's awesome. got him. Looking at Doug <laughs> and he can't say a word, that's the greatest thing. He can't interrupt me. He can't talk forever. You think I'm bad at that? I'm nothing. Like, I haven't even talked this whole show. Um, if they can get six teams in, can they get three to the Sweet 16? And if they can do that, if they can get three to the Sweet 16, and, like, I, I, I'm kind of with them. I don't know who that team is that can go to a Final Four out of this group. But, again, nobody thought San Diego State would get there last year. I don't think that they have a final – like, I'm doing air quotes here, a Final Four. FAU made it last year. Anybody can be a Final Four team. But I don't Somebody's think they have Somebody's going to make it. Final Somebody's going to make it again that we're going to look at I, I, and be like, know. how? I know. I just when I when I when I say that they are like this team is a Final Four team, yeah, yeah. I mean they're like a real threat. I mean they're someone that you kind of look at and you say, yeah, that's a team that can that that I think is a favorite, a contender to get there. Anyone can win four games in March. Like that's the beauty of the sport, right? Um, I don't I don't know if there is more than two teams that I think would feel comfortable saying, yeah, I think they can definitely get to a second weekend yeah. from the Mountain West. I don't even think there is one. But I think if you get six, maybe seven teams into the tournament, there's enough right. good basketball that's played in that league and enough good teams in that conference where you give me six or seven chances at a seven seed picking off a two, I feel pretty comfortable with them getting one or two of those done, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, again, you know, we saw Utah State tonight. I, I've seen him in person. Like, great awesome boards. He's tough, man. He's a tough matchup. Darius Brown, Ian Martinez. They got three dudes that can match up with a lot of uh, – people's top three new mexico mashburn didn't play tonight uh they've got three guards that are really good and a couple bigs mm -hmm. and jt Toppin and, and nelly joseph junior joseph um we know colorado state's got one of the best point guards in america san diego state's got their culture and they've got Jaden lady who's an all-american type candidate so uh, there's an there's enough there there's enough there boise we talked about taking Hart and max rice and, and nevada's got some guys too so um, yeah, I mean, I, listen, to me, there's no reason that they can't have some measure of success in the tournament. And if things break right, maybe they have a team 
uh, in the Elite Eight and maybe in the Final Four that we didn't. I'm just play. sad that I'm just sad that it's the the Mountain West season's over. You know, I yeah, I loved I, I loved um, ending this yeah. show at it's like to finishing a live call at twelve thirty and then going and putting on whatever Mountain West game was on like FS1 or CBS Sports yeah. Network and then watching the last thirty minutes of insanity every night in that con. It's just it was such a fun league and we got. UNLV in Nevada playing here. It's a 10-point game with six minutes left. That's probably, well, that's probably done. So uh, it was a great year, a great year of Mountain West basketball. And I'll tell you what, I've never met anybody that is as, as excited to get to an, uh, a conference tournament as T.O. is to get to Vegas to do the Mountain West Conference Tournament. Like, I don't blame he's like him. A I'm kid, jealous. He's like a kid on Christmas Eve right now thinking about going I'm to the torn. Mountain West Conference Tournament. I'm torn. You know this. We were in a group chat earlier, and – I'm torn. I'm supposed to go to the Big 12 tournament, Doug. I'm going to go to – first, I'm going to go to the SOCOM finals Monday Yeah, night. let's talk this out. Let's talk this out. Let's figure it out. Let, yeah. What are you going to do? So, I'm supposed to go to the Big 12 tournament, but I'm like – I'm thinking about it. And I'm just like, do I want to be at the Big 12? Like, what's the intrigue of the Big 12 tournament? There's not a whole lot. I just haven't seen those teams enough, which is why I want to go to the Big 12 tournament. I've I've seen the SEC teams. We went in a run. Who haven't you seen? You haven't seen you haven't seen Iowa State. I've not seen Iowa State. I haven't seen Oklahoma. I haven't seen. Um, you won't see Oklahoma well, long. JV McCollum didn't play today. They got their asses kicked. They're not very good. I know they'll. they'll probably I can tell you all about Oklahoma. Seen, they're just they're just. They're I haven't just okay. seen BYU or Baylor in person. I haven't seen Texas. In BYU Baylor. white guys that shoot threes. I saw them practice. White guys that practice. shoot threes. I did. That's not they shoot a lot of threes. And, they and when I saw Houston, listen, when I saw Houston again, I saw him in that one game at Kansas where it was like, man, sometimes it's hard to get that out of your head, right? Like, in, like of you course. said, it wasn't like they were awful. It was just like Kansas was so good. So good. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I don't know okay, so wait, what, what, are the, what are the choices? I mean, I could probably go anywhere I want, but um, – I probably won't go to Big East because Doster's already there with RC and uh, Jarrell McNeil. So I'll probably go to another Big East one. I can legend Jarrell McNeil. Get it right, Goodman. The Put answer, some respect the, look, name. Big East legend J- J- Jarrell McNeil. Yeah, Jeff, this is really Vegas. easy. Go ahead. Why? What do I do? Why can't you go to Vegas? Do you like barred from casinos or something? Cause, no, because we're going the next week to the first round. So I'll lose too much money okay. in Vegas. I'm there that long it'll be bad it will i don't trust myself that long it's too long i'll give you picks you'll make money <laughs> you have go been good you have been good you've been very good um uh okay so wait so so where are you where are you tomorrow home tomorrow fly to socon monday doing the show from with you okay from so you're going to asheville monday. Yes. Yeah, I'm in High Point tomorrow. I'm doing the Big South. Yep. Okay. I want to do the SoCon, but uh, hum- your boy Hummel's doing that one. I know he is. I know he is. Yeah, Hummel's Why doing it. Why don't you it. drive over? Why don't you drive over and just go? Because I want to go home. All right. Are you going to Vegas? No, I have to go to uh, I have the Big Ten from Wednesday on, oh, Wednesday right, to Sunday. Right. You're in Big Ten. We're going to have you on. Yeah, we're yeah, going to have you on. on the show. I'm, 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 you're going to be on the show. I'm aware. Are you hitting? Are you, you gonna, gonna, hitting PF Changs? What are we gonna get from the Big Ten? I would never hit. I, I, there's no disrespect to PF Changs if they want to sponsor the sponsor uh, field of sixty eight. That would be great. But no, I mean that was just it was like a knee jerk thing here. Like I was rolling here. I want to make sure I was set for you guys. And so I, you know, try not to order something completely disgusting for me. And oh, so gee, I went with PF, PF Changs. <laughs> I mean, but I didn't go anything with fried. Extra I just MSG. did extra MSG. Yeah, okay. extra MSG. I'm trying to be healthy. I got PF Chang's with extra MSG. <laughs> well, I had lettuce wraps. Lettuce wraps is not bad, right? And some sushi. Like, hey, you know who turned terrible? me on the lettuce wraps? You know who's the first one who? to turn me on the lettuce wraps from PF Chang's? Who? who? You'll know this guy, I think. Rob won't. Brett Gunning. Remember Brett Gunning? Yeah. Uh, yes. He was built. Villanova, then he went to the NBA for years. I think he would have yeah. been the next. He, he might have been Kyle Neptune right now. He might have been the Villanova head coach if he had stayed in college. Anyway, all right, let's um, move on. All right. 
All right, here, we have uh, we have three bids getting punched tomorrow. We have the Missouri Valley yep. title game, we have the Big South title game, and we have the A Sun title game. Um, the one that I really want to talk about is the Missouri Valley, and we don't have to go on this too long. But can we just there, there's all right? There's two things I want to say here. One, we got to make sure that both of these teams get in, right? They both. That's deserve- what I'm saying. I said they this to Jeff, and Jeff's like, "No, they're not getting in. They're not getting in." Like, I don't why? Think that, I, I don't think that they are. But I think that they – I want them both. I don't think Drake will. Both I don't think Drake gets in if they lose. I don't. Because I don't. they lost They lost to UAB in overtime and to Stephen F. Austin? It doesn't help you. Yeah, those aren't good losses. Unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, they don't have enough – yeah, they don't have enough exactly. good wins. They don't have enough meat on their on their, their resume to withstand those losses. Well, we sucks. have to have we, – we have to have Larry Blurred in – or. Cream Abdul Jabbar. We have to have him in very, the tournament. Very nerd. It has he's to be. Dance. He's got to dance. And here's the other thing that I'll say. Okay? Have to here's have the him. other thing I'll say. Is is I look. I'm talking to you, Josh Shirts. I'm talking to you right now, man. Listen. I know that you're going to try to jump at a job. I know that you're going to say, you know, oh, maybe there's a better opportunity for me. Maybe I can get more money. Maybe this. Maybe that. I just want to Indiana State. This, that, and the third. Run it back next year. Bring everybody back. And you know what might open up next cycle, the next coaching carousel? You could take the state off of Indiana State. You could end up at Indiana. Why not that? Come back for a year. Let's run it back. Let's get Indiana State as a top 15 in America, a top 15 team in America. You know how many, you know how many coaches have said, I'm going to run it back? You know how many coaches said, I'm going to run it back? And then they there's never the same. Just wait until like, he gets to the I final understand. four. He's going to be the new Dusty May. We're going to co- if he gets to the final four. Five. If he gets to the final four, then they should fire Mike Woodson's ass right now and hire that dude, right? <laughs> but like <laughs> Dust, Dusty brought everybody back. Dusty brought everybody back. Okay, and they won today, but it has not been easy. It's just no. not. Nope, it's not. So, and I mean no. that dude, that that poor dude was at D two. Man, I did a pod with him. He told the stories about when he first took over that job, how he signed the contract at the Shoney's. Like, he's definitely paid his dues. Yeah, where would he? Knows. Where would he go, Jeff? Shirts. Yeah. He. I mean, nowhere. Nowhere. He he's could staying. go. He's running he, back. He mean. could. He could be. He's on the list at Louisville. He's on it. Not high, but he's on the list at Louisville. He's on the list at DePaul. He's on the list at St. Louis for when that opens. He's obviously he went to FAU. He won't take that, I don't think, because that just seems like a dumb move. Even though he's from Boca, why he grew this, up in. Why isn't St. Louis in the Valley? Um, I mean, they, I, I'm sure they want to be in the Big East, but right. the, the why, A10 why does would nothing. Why would they want to be in the Valley? Why would they want to be in the Valley? Because at least you have schools that are close that you might get know, get a but, chance to put people in the arena. Like you're at the yeah. Shavit Center; it's a nice mm-hmm. arena. Yeah, like you're, you're gonna more really you think you're, for Saint Saint Bonaventure? I mean, they, they're come on down and see us play more Missouri State. League. Or, they're thinking they're more of a multi bid league too, which they haven't. Been. They don't get any of those bids. I, I know, I know, <laughs> and they have been a multi bid league. Here's my. By the way, I just wrote anyway. them out. I quickly can I while you're on okay. your Indiana yes, State go. deal here. Yeah, you know, I'm thinking about my kind of theory here of really eight teams versus eight teams to play your way in. And I'm just looking at what the matchups could be potentially, like mm-hmm. if Drake doesn't make it. Like, again, Drake St. John's, JMU or App State, whichever one doesn't make it against, like, New Mexico. Uh, Grand Canyon, if they don't get in automatic against, like, Providence. You know, Princeton against Villanova. Play against each other on Monday or Tuesday. You know, even you go four versus four, and the winners – all get in the main bracket. Like, that would be fun. That's what I think – that would be a whole lot better than the crap we're going to see in the first four where, honestly, most of the time I'm packing while I'm watching those games because two of them, frankly, don't interest me that much. I- I'm not going to lie. It really, a lot of times, all four don't interest me that much. Yep. All right, let's uh, let's do Toast the Night. And let's uh, let's get on out of here. We'll let Doug finish his PF Changs. We'll let Goodman go to sleep, and we'll get Dagan to stop whining about having to uh, having to go to work. <laughs> All right, Goodman, toast one, the night. One, one. What are we starting with? <laughs> what do we got, Goodman? Toast of the night. Uh, I'm going to my boys in Logan. 
because they can't drink because there's nowhere to drink. So I'm going to drink for them tonight. And uh, Utah State, great Osibor, Darius Brown the second, Danny Sprinkle. Um, I'm going to drink for you because you just want an outright Mountain West uh, regular season title um, when people predicted you to finish ninth and nobody thought you'd do this. So, uh, again, try to find the watering hole. I'm told there's one there, but if you don't, um, I'm drinking for you. Doug? Um, hold on. Let me, let me add, can I add to yours real quick? Yes. Do you know who Jerry Bovey is? Do you know who Jerry yes. Bovey is? I met him. Yeah, I met Jerry's him. Jerry's a life. Jerry's been there forever. He's a lifer. He did not get the AD, full-time AD job. He was the interim athletic director, old-time basketball guy. But he's the one who hired Danny Sprinkle. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So, Jerry, I got two toasts. Good this dude. one's for you. Yeah. Great dude. Great dude. But also, like, he will not get the credit that he deserves. He made that hire. Right. Yep. All right. Mine is off the college board. Uh, one of my best friends in the world, my teammate, Brian Montanati is the coach at Owasso High School. 6A state championship. They took on two-time defending state champion Edmund North, and they won. His son, Jalen Montanati, is one of the best sophomores. 9 a.m. or something? 9 a.m. game? Well, they played the semis at 9 a.m. Like, what the fuck are we doing having high school kids play in a state semifinal at 9 a.m. in the morning? Like, Jesus Christ, who does this stupid shit, right? I'm like, how do you expect to make you I, – it's not the point. The point is more for, like, one, for everybody. Second, like, you're actually trying to make money on it. Who's going to get up and drive from Owasso, which is on the northeast side of Tulsa, to Norman, like, to watch a game at 9 in the morning? It's like you want to lose money. This is not that fucking hard, okay? All the games in the afternoon and evening. And if you can't get them in at all one arena, get more than one arena. It's not that hard. Anyway. Uh, this is my boy Brian Montnani and his son Jalen. They won their first state title ever. Congratulations, B. Congrats. Let's hear to that. All right. I have, uh, I'm, I'm going to, I have three. I'll be quick on them. First one three. Trey three. Alexander. Yeah, on he's got road, three. He works way Ad harder Villanova. than we do. Yeah. Oklahoma on guy. Road, Villanova, Trey Alexander uh, hits a game winning jumper after. Creighton went out and blew a 24-point first half lead at Villanova. Hell of a shot, hell of a moment, hell of a win for the Blue Jays, who are the two-seed in the Big East tournament and get Providence uh, or Georgetown, but probably Providence in the quarterfinals. So cheers. Um, cheers there. Is that Vlad? Cheers to big yeah, Vlad and FAU. How can you not? Way to get a win tonight? Come on. Well, it's it's reflecting uh, off the the light there, Jared. Yeah, it's hard to see because of, of the light. Right. Uh, big light. My second toast is going to uh, Drew Valentine at Loyola. We already toasted Richmond for winning the league when they clinched a share of it. Richmond lost today at George Mason. Loyola got themselves a win. So Drew Valentine went from last place in the A10 last year to first place in the A10 this Maybe. year. Unbelievable season. Uh, for the Ramblers, unbelievable season for Drew Valentine, who once said that uh, he likes the shoes that I was wearing. And knowing he, as much of a sneakerhead yeah, as he yeah. is, that made me feel pretty damn good uh, about myself. And uh, my last toast of the night is going to uh, to go out to Friartown because I know that those guys really need a beverage tonight. <laughs> um, they really need to have a drink. They really need to kind of forget what just happened. Uh, and I, I will just say, Goodman, I do believe that the NIT – Looks good in orange. Oh boy, that hurts him. That hurts him. That wasn't nice. <laughs> Divine. Divine. It's good stuff. Are we done? You can end it. That was it. We're that done. was the line. How do you not know? We laid out. I mean, we laid no. out. Like, could it have been more clear? <laughs>